There are rapists all over this country getting away with rape. Sexual offenders all over this country getting away with sexual offence. We know from the Met Commissioner, he told us 10 days ago or so when he was uh, answering questions from the London Assembly, that we can expect two or three Metropolitan Police officers a week for a period of time to be in the headlines, to be appearing in court uh, for crimes uh, against women and girls, crimes uh, largely of a sexual nature is what he was intimating in the answer that he gave to Assembly members. Uh, Like I said a moment ago, let's hope none of them are on this scale. But that the reality is that that itself, that very fact, is contributing to, contributes massively to, the social and moral climate around rape and sexual assault. And I'll tell you something else that contributes to it as well and allows rape and sexual assault to happen again and again and again and again with impunity. Terrible politics the destruction of the criminal justice system by terrible political leaders. That's what's been happening for over a decade now in this country. The rape conviction rate is risible and amounts to almost decriminalising rape. You know, to talk of a 50% increase in rape convictions, as Dominic Raab did the other day, was wholly, wholly deceitful and deceptive. Because that, has, that means in numbers, not, not in percentages, in numbers, a, a conviction rate of 1 in 10 has gone up to 1.5 in 10. So there are rapists all over this country getting away with rape. Sexual offenders all over this country getting away with sexual offence against women and against girls and against men. Uh, the judge also included uh, the name uh, Reynard Sinaga, who committed rapes uh, against over 100 men, 135, I think, was the tally in the end. So we have to, in any conversation about David Carrick, and in and of itself and himself, his crimes are appalling and worthy of discussion, but we cannot put it in any other context than the risible response to rape investigations and rape allegations that exist in this country. I've been reflecting since listening to uh, the judge's uh, uh, sentencing remarks in Southwark Crown Court today um, on how the Carrick case is just a—it's an individual man, obviously, an individual offender. But so many elements of his crimes, I think, are an illustration of the overall problem with how we approach, uh, particularly when victims first speak up about crimes or when we see questionable behaviour. So questionable in his case that his colleagues, in Carrick's case, that his colleagues in the Met called him, and forgive me for the language, I'll say it once and I won't repeat it, called him Bastard Dave. Um, you know, the, the that doesn't come out of nowhere. It doesn't come out of nowhere. Um, and and in her statementing, her statement um today as she was sentencing Carrick, Uh, the judge said she referred to uh, comments made uh, when Wayne Cousins was convicted of the murder of Sarah Everard and how an aggravating uh, element of his crime was that he used his warrant card to convince Sarah to get into the car with him. And that is a very aggravating factor, isn't it, when you think of the trust relationship that's supposed to exist between the Met and the, or any police force and the rest of us. And at the time, it was he was described as warped, selfish, brutal, uh, sexual, homicidal, uh, grotesque misuse of status. And and that is that is a clear and accurate account of of Wayne Cousins and and what he did. But actually, you could lift several of those words to describe any form of sexual uh, abuse and domestic sexual and violent abuse as well. Warped, selfish, brutal, sexual, grotesque misuse of status. Because if you're using your relationship, and and that is a kind of status, isn't it? If you're in a marriage or a partnership and sharing a house and raising children, that's a kind of status. If you're using that relationship in which to abuse a partner, in which to abuse and hurt children, even if they're just witnessing the abuse of their mother or father. 
more often than not, mother. If you're uh, using that status, you are warped. Every form of domestic abuse is warped behaviour, whether it's financial control, uh, whether it's coercive control, whether it's physical harm. It's all warped, selfish, brutal, grotesque and a misuse of status. And I honestly think we have stopped seeing male violence against women and girls in particular. I think we have stopped seeing it for the warped, selfish, brutal, sexual, grotesque misuse of status that it is, even if the only status you have is greater strength because you're a man. It is all in the same category as that description of Wayne Cousins. What made his set apart, and you can argue the same for David Carrick, I think, is the abuse, misuse of his status as a Metropolitan Police officer. And as I've said umpteen times since one o'clock, the Metropolitan Police Commissioner, who we are expecting to hear from this afternoon, um, has made it clear that pretty soon, presumably once um, Dame Louise Casey's uh, full report is out, um, we're going to see two to three officers a week in court, appearing in court. Um, all of their cases have come to light because of the conviction of Wayne Cousins in 2021. David Carrick was arrested because of the conviction of Wayne Cousins in 2021. And what that shows is a couple of things. It shows that when you take a problem seriously, when you take people's crimes seriously and commit to support victims when they come forward, two things happen. More victims come forward and then other victims see that more victims are coming forward and they come forward and victims start to feel some degree of trust in the system. 